Now on Bloomberg Intelligence, Muni's In Focus. Focus on Muni's is brought to you by Build America Mutual, insurers U.S. municipal bonds that finance essential American infrastructure and provides guaranteed income to improve any portfolio be part of building america and invest in bam insured bonds while well, joining us now to discuss the state of the muni market is eric kazatsky a senior municipal strategist for bloomberg intelligence he joins us from princeton new jersey we were just listening to mark zuckerberg talk about how former president trump is a badass what does a former president trump mean for the muni market do we have any idea in terms of tax implications etc yeah, I mean, look, it, a lot of it's speculation at this point, but we can take some cues to what happened during the first Trump presidency, right? We got the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, and in many ways it was very, um, you know, controversial and it changed a lot of aspects of the muni market, one of them being the elimination of the ability for issuers to refund their debt. Um, we don't see that coming back. And I think best case scenario for a Trump administration is we get a second dose of tax cuts and jobs acts and those provisions are extended. Um, you know, they're talking about lowering corporate tax rates. That would obviously knock down demand on the muni side. But if we can keep top, you know, individual tax rates where they are, I think that should balance things out a bit. Um, what have we noticed in terms of, say, issuance in the last week? It does seem uh, that we're looking at a steeper curve, but the why the steeper, not today, because we're seeing a little sell-off in the bond market, but yeah. why we're getting that steeper curve, right? Are we getting it because people are buying the front end, because we're looking at rate cuts, or because the back end is selling off because we're worried about growth? What have you noticed in the muni market? It's really just a play on where the, people think the Fed is going to be mm -hmm. uh, most actionable over the you know the second half of this year. Um, I think our rates team is predicting uh, at least three cuts uh, for the remainder of 2024. So if you're an investor and you're looking at the curve, I think the best way to go about that is to try and put a little bit of a barbell on, right? Concentrate some focus on the front end of the curve. Stay away from really the the belly of the curve where we've seen you know the least amount of total return, and p probably focus on more in that 12 to 15 year portion. Uh, what what kind of good issuance have we seen? This is always the fun part, right? What cool issuance yeah. did you notice this week? <laughs> issuance has been really strong uh, over the last month. And again, we don't really see that pace keeping up as we get closer and closer to the election and mm -hmm. we get more and more volatility introduced. Um, so we're hoping we have at least another two months of that, you know, scheduled uh, bond sales coming in and, and at least exceeding expectations. Um, for deals that are super interesting, Bright line train. Um, you know, we talked about it in Florida. We talk about the project that's going on connecting um, LA to Las Vegas. They're selling another half a billion dollars of debt. Um, what that really means is that there's more high yield supply coming to the market, and that's been an area that's been extremely strong for the muni market over the first half of this year. And demand just keeps ki killing it, right? Absolutely. I mean, we have returns almost at 5%. And, you know, compared to the rest of the muni market, you're outperforming AAA munis by several hundred basis points. But comparative to other first halves of the year for high yield, it's a pretty normal year. But it's something that we want to see that there's a lot of focus on at least people being willing to go down the credit spectrum. On the flip side, though, I, I, I did read this article earlier that um, you basically have a distressed California hospital um, yeah. saying that it's been dismissed for bankruptcy and they're trying to get bankruptcy eligibility. Um, how did this come about? I mean, I haven't read that article, but that's certainly interesting. Um, it's probably something I need to bone up on personally. Um, <laughs> we don't see a lot of, you know, situations where the workout scenario isn't more, um, I would say, long-winded when it comes to the muni market, right? And okay. we could point to, obviously, the notable ones that we can all talk about, like Puerto Rico and Detroit, um, and even, like, the senior housing issues that have popped up. Nothing really happens quickly because you need bondholder consent, and there's a lot of people involved with it and a lot of sign-offs. Okay, so we're not quite, so, that, so that's going to be an unusual uh, situation there. Yeah. Uh, all right, what else are you watching for next week? You know what? It's really going to be a focus on what the Fed is going to be doing. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, look, obviously, like, they could come out and have a surprise cut. We don't see that happening. But, you know, we're already looking to September at this point. We're hoping issuance stays strong, um, and we're hoping that rates continue to tick lower. You know, lower rates really impact a lot of areas in our market. Um, you know, as rates creep down, mortgage rates will follow. That will increase home sales. And on the margin, you know, that's going to have an effect for transfer taxes for state and local governments, right? You know, at a time when tax collections are slowing down, every little bit's going to help them. All right, Eric, thanks a lot. Super appreciate it. Thank you very much, Eric Kazatsky, joining us. Bloomberg uh, Intelligence covers the muni bond market for us.